welcome to the second episode of Ask Ex Libris. Today it's my turn and I will be answering a question that came in from Daniel Petrosa. The question is, and I'm gonna read it because it's quite extensive, Diana, we all miss live shows and I know how much you miss singing on stage and believe me, I really do. I, just, oh, I really do. What are some things that you do religiously in those minutes before coming out to the stage? Well, Daniel and everyone else interested, it's not in the few minutes before I enter the stage. It's not even in the hour before I enter the stage. It's the whole day that needs preparation. So let me take you through that. This is what I do on a show day. Well, it's a show day, so what could be more important than having a voice all warmed up in those minutes before you enter the stage? For me, that all starts with a warm-up in the beginning of the day. In the morning, for example, I will just do some breath exercises to, you know, speak to my muscles, have them prepared and ready for action. So that's the first thing, breath exercises. And then I won't do anything for an hour. After that hour, I will come back, re-enter the breath exercises and add lip trills like or just what's more convenient. I have various moments of this during the day and um, I could do a whole video about that. So if you're interested, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll see if I can make another video for the Ask Ex Libris item that features only how my warm up during a day works. Well then, at some point I will be heading towards the venue and there will be a sound check. It's of course important to have the vocal cords warmed up before the sound check, but I do a medium warm up because it's still a process, it's not the product already. Of course you will have to give something like 70-80% of what you will be doing later that evening, but there's no audience yet, so don't try to steal the show during a sound check, it's, uh, well, it's a waste of energy. Well then, after sound check, I usually take a moment of rest, not speak too much, keep quiet preferably, and then have an early dinner because it's very important that later on I can speak to the lower part of my belly because I will need it for breath support and uh, that doesn't work if it's all filled up with yummy food and heavy food. So please keep it light as well, or at least that is what works for me. Then I will spend something like 60 minutes doing makeup and all the women will now think, oh yeah, that's relatable. And men will think, what, 60 minutes? But it's not only doing makeup. This is me time. This is where I get my tranquility and where I really zoom out of everything that is happening. Because believe me, in a backstage, I don't often have it all to myself. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of noise. I love to plug in and listen to some music, which mostly has nothing to do with the music that I will be performing later that evening, because that would already shift my focus to the evening and I don't want that. So I would listen to classical music or maybe singer songwriter if I have a symphonic or progressive metal show. Just really something else that doesn't yet put me into work modus. So then when the show makeup is done, I will get to my very last round of exercises. And this is where I shift from process exercises into product exercises. For me, it's important to know what the highest note of the show will be and what the lowest note of the show will be. And I will make sure that I will warm up two notes higher than my highest show note and two notes lower than my lowest show notes, just to have the whole spectrum warmed up and everything prepared and ready to go. Okay, we finally made it to those few minutes before the show. And I guess at this point I'm already in stage clothing. And this is where I try to keep my focus and not mentally linger too much into everything that's happening around me. I will make sure that I have a bottle of warm-ish water, never cold water, with a few drops of honey because it's, ah, it's so nice on the voice. And next to that, my stage kit also has some vocal Pastils, of course. You can choose to use the ones from Vocal Zone. To me, they're a bit too heavy. I think they're quite menthol, and yeah, in my experience, that causes dehydration. So I love to use Isla Mos, that is much softer. And I will only use it if I have a longer break, just to get the saliva going again, because if there's a lot of stage smoke, which I 
hate than the voice dehydrates and sometimes I need a pastel just to get it going again. During the day I keep away from smoke. Smoke is my number one enemy and I hate, well I've mentioned it before, I hate stage smoke but I, oi, I hate people who smoke, well not the people but the smoke and usually they're not quite social towards singers because they simply don't understand our struggles. So I keep away from smoke in whatever capacity. I keep away from loud noise because if people ask you something you will tend to speak over it and you won't notice that you are hurting your voice or restraining it. So keep away from that as well. And thirdly, keep away from spicy food because you don't want those stomach acids to, well, make it to the top during exercises or even worse, on stage. <laughs> what is good for your voice? Well, hydration and sleep. Those two can work wonders, but only if you listen to your body carefully. So this was episode two of Ask Ex Libris, in which I answered not what I do religiously in the moments before entering the stage, but what I do religiously the whole day of a show day. I hope that you've enjoyed my answers. And if you have any other question for me, Bob or Yoast, let us know in the comments down below. See you next time.